So tonight's uh, study is going to be the power of expectations. Uh, if you wake up tomorrow morning and just wait till see what happens, uh, you're probably going to get blindsided and sideswiped. But if you arise tomorrow morning with expectations uh, in the kingdom of God through pow the power of God, uh, you probably will accomplish great things. Particularly when we come to church on Sunday mornings. Can I get an amen? amen. And Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. So let me give you a uh, special announcement. So we were talking about this a little bit and uh, we've made a couple of adjustments and changes. So Wednesday night, September 20th, that's three weeks, four weeks from now, somewhere in that neighborhood. Jacob Oglesby will begin teaching a series, and I'm going to give you the title here in a minute. This will be, this is not going to be your, uh, uh, your uh, basic kindergarten stuff. This is going to be some pretty deep stuff. And this is going to get your brain going. Okay? So we are going to do the session from 7 to 8. And that will be live streamed at eight o'clock. We are shutting live stream off and then we will open it up for a Q and a session. Okay. So here's a question for you. Have you ever wondered, God, how come this is happening to me? <laughs> Why am I going through this? Have you ever had somebody come up to you and ask that? Well, you're a Christian. How come God's letting this happen? So the title of this series is How to Know That God is Good Even When Life Is Not. And some, so Roxy and I have uh, proofreaded some of this stuff that we looked at each other and go, this is way beyond my pay grade. I seriously looked up, a, I thought that's not a word, and I looked it up and it was a word. It's so a word. It's a long word. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, and he's going to have study guides and whole, and it's yeah. uh, it's scheduled to uh, go eight weeks, correct? Eight or nine weeks? I can't remember. I think you said nine. Uh, nine weeks, and so um, you're going to be given a survey before and after, and this is part of his doctorate work, um, uh, and so I'm looking forward to some time off. And I'm looking forward to looking at some faces and going, what? Yeah. You don't do that on a regular basis. Because, <laughs> like I said, this, going to get, this will get your mind to thinking. And, and I'm going to tell you, number one, it will help you. And number two, it will help you to be able to answer those that come to you with the question, why do good things happen to, why do bad things happen to good people? Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about tonight <clears throat> the power of of expectations if you wake up tomorrow not expecting anything good to happen you're probably going to get it but we can live in the life attitude and power of expectations so question number one what happens when I live with the power of expectation. What does Philippians chapter 1 verse 20 say? That I live in eager expectation. Finish it, boom. Finish that. It's on the screen if you want to know. For I live in what? Eager, eager, eager expectation. expectation and hope. Eager expectation. So if we live in eager expectation, number one, first thing that happens is we rise above the norm. The normal is, okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. 
nothing's ever going to change. And nothing's ever going to change for me. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. I'm such a grumpy guy. <laughs> I was singing for him. <laughs> okay. Secondly, but uh, now let's balance this out. This is not some um, uh, Middle Eastern guru uh, philosophy uh, where you name it, claim it, imagine, and okay. This is all through the power of God. But if you live in expectation, you can achieve what you can conceive. Okay? Now, the phrase in that Philippians chapter 1, verse 20, that says, eager expectation, in the Greek, that's only one word. And it's similar to the word in Romans chapter 8, verse 19. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will review, reveal who his children really are. Romans 8, 19. So the Greek word there literally means to look forward towards something that you know is going to take place. It is living in expectation. Somebody read Mark, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verse 23. Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus replied, What do you mean, if I can? Anything is possible if a person believes. Okay, so the guy came to him and said, Um, that he wanted to cast an evil spirit, have the evil spirit cast out of his son, and the man asked Jesus, do, do something if you can. And this is Jesus' reply. What do you mean, if I can? Anything is possible to a person if a person truly believes. Questions? Comments? That's the guy that also said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Yeah. There you go. Which seems to be our cry more and more. Okay? What else happens? I can move forward in confidence. Well, I would try, but I know I'm going to fail anyway. Yeah, you probably are because you just spoke the power of the words over your life and your ears heard what you just spoke. So you mm -hmm. just set yourself up. What do you call that one then? Is it's there a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yes, thank you. I knew there was a word for it or a phrase for it. Okay, so that would be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay. Yep. I just prophesied over my life. Mm -hmm. I might as well not try because I know if I do, I'll fail. What would happen if all of the great inventors, movers, movers and shakers of the world had that philosophy? We'd be sitting here with candles. We'd maybe. be sitting in candles <laughs> yeah. and caves. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you know, if a person always had that attitude that if they're going to fail, how are they going to move forward? Because, you know, a lot of times we learn from our mistakes. True. And if we don't learn from mistakes or don't learn from Well, you know, you go back to Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison never said he failed one time, even though he tried hundreds of times to get a light bulb to work, and a lot of them didn't work. He said those were not failures. Those were just learning that that particular process didn't work. Time to move on to the next one. Yep. Okay. Okay. Not 
not that it works, holding science, technology, engineering, and math. You tr they give you a problem, you, they give you certain things like baby blue, straw, whatever, and you try to, to do what they have to do to build a bridge or whatever, it does not work, so students can try it. If it fails, it's okay. You still have the process of trying to figure out right. what it works. So then that's a good thing that they're teaching you because it's okay to fail. You can try again. Yes. Because how do, how do we learn? <laughs> trial and error. Yeah. Lots of trials and lots of errors. But if we keep if, if if we focus on the trials and errors, then we don't focus on what lesson did I learn from that? Okay. I mean, uh, I don't know if you've ever if you've ever so I remember when I was a kid. And plugging in the TV, and I didn't grab it by the plastic part, I grabbed it by the metal part and plugged it in. <laughs> and guess what? I learned my lesson don't grab it by that metal, grab it by the plastic part, it hurts a lot less. Lesson learned. And this is, and I'm going to just smack somebody. This is the problem with culture and society in, in, to a certain degree. They don't want to be challenged in any of their belief systems. They don't want to be challenged. They want it all easy peasy, nice fluffy pillows. That's not life. That's not life. You, you take a step forward, evaluate, and keep going. So we find in the scripture this, Philippians chapter 1, and verse 6, God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on that day when Jesus Christ comes back again. Now, those of you that want this, come get it. Those of you that don't, just sit there and take notes quietly, and then you can go home unchanged. So how do I begin to live in expectation? Number one, I live for Christ and not for myself. I live for Christ and not myself. Well, it's quiet in here tonight. Let's read that. For I live in eager expectation and hope that I will never do anything that causes me shame, but that I will always be bold for Christ as I have been in the past and that my life will always honor Christ whether I live or die. <laughs> Okay, so Paul eagerly expects and hopes for three things. Number one, I live in eager expectation and hope that, number one, I will never do anything that would cause shame to Christ and the body of Christ. I will always be bold for Christ and my life will always honor Christ. That's some tough stuff. Okay? So how do I begin? We live to serve and not to be served. And we live in particularly in the United States of America, we live in a consumer con culture. And we and I'm going to tell you tonight that we live in a consumer culture in a lot of church. What's in it for me? So if I go to your church, what are you going to do for me? Okay, I want this for my five-year-old. I want this for my nine-year-old. I want this for my 15-year-old. 
and I want this for my 17 year old and I want this for me and my husband or me and my wife. And if you don't do it, then I'm going to move on to the next church. What's in it for me? And I'm not going to volunteer for anything and I'm not going to give a dime to anything, but I want, I want, I want. The only expectation that you have is, what am I going to get out of going to this church? And that's not what living in expectation for Christ is. It's to live to serve and not to be served. Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 through 22. For to me, living is for Christ. And dying is even better. Yet if I live, that means fruitful service for Christ. And I really don't know which is better. In other words, I'm ready to go. But if God gives me tomorrow, hello somebody, then he's got a purpose and destiny for my life. And I'm going to live in expectation and do something for God tomorrow. Oh, either really quiet or take or a lot of pondering and a lot of notes. How do I begin to live in expectation? I live to improve the lives of others. Whatever this one is, uh, whatever this it's, one is, and I don't know what uh, what version this one is. Not King James, you know that. Yeah. Not any of the normal ones. Yeah. I, I'd, ha I'd have to go back and look. Sometimes they do that to me. So, <laughs> Philippians 1, verses 23 through 26. I'm between. I'm torn between two desires. And this should, this, this should be our desire. This should be the way that we're living. I want to go, but I want to stay. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes I want to live. Sometimes I long to go and be with Christ. That would be far better for me, but it is better for you that I live. Mm -hmm. I am convinced of this, so I will continue with you so that you will grow and experience the joy of your faith, that when I return to you, you will have even more reason to boast about what Christ Jesus has done for me. I long to go home. Mm -hmm. But if God gives me tomorrow, what am I going to do? Occupy till he comes. Occupy. Live for Christ. I like that very much. Occupy. Live. Because listen, if God's given you another day, that means either you're not right or you're not ready or he's not ready. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take a liberty here. We need to change, listen, we need to change what we say. God doesn't take people home. He receives them. Okay, it isn't, okay, I'm done with you. Wham! That's not the way it is. God says, it's time for you to come home. The gates are open wide. We are receiving you to your eternal reward. Like when your kids come back home after they've moved, you know, they come back for a, for a visit. You are excited to see them and you receive them. Yeah. You're happy to see them. Right. And I've said it, you know, God, God just took them home. No, God received them. Okay, he's not in the taking business. He's in the receiving he business. Enter in that good and faithful servant. Yes, we do. We do. That's a good, mm -hmm. good. That's good. Amen. Another one we should do as believers is speak not death over us. So we just fall asleep in front. Fall asleep. Yeah, that's good. Amen. Turn yourself differently. Not believer dies. The believer falls asleep. When Christ rose from the dead, death has no more victory over us. That ended. If we live, we win. If we go on home, we win. we win. 
It's a win-win. But if I know, I know, I'm gonna say it anyway. If we just live our life just to go home, that's not living. Okay? Look around. Look around the world. Look around our community. Look, look in our church. There is work to be done. And can we live our life to improve the lives of others like our loved ones? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So what does living in expectation look like? We see Christ honored. Christ honored. Philippians 127, but whatever happens to me, you must live in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ as a good citizen of heaven. As a good citizen of heaven. Now, Do you, do you see the, all the connections that are going on here? God gives us another day. What are we going to do with it? Carpe diem. Seize the day. Grab a hold of it and say, I'm going to honor Christ today. I'm going to honor Christ. Now, it may not be, it may not be in the news headlines, but I want to honor Christ. <laughs> when that person cuts me off in traffic and then flips me off as if it's my fault, I'm going to honor Christ. God, they almost struck your anointing. I want retribution. And that passage it says later on down the road there, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Is that striving together with Christ or striving together as a church, as a unit, as believers? You mean like that? <laughs> <laughs> we see the church united. Good question. Done. So let me read what th this version has to say. Whether I come and see you again or only hear about you, I will know that you are standing side by side, fighting together for the gospel of the good news. King James said, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. That's awesome. Okay, we, 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 we live to see, we work to see, we fight to see, we strive to see the church united. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to have differences of opinion, but we can still be united and we can still we can be in unity and in harmony. That's what, that is the most powerful force in the kingdom of God is unity and harmony in moving in one direction. Matter of fact, I will tell you that's the most powerful force in the world, period. Okay? Acts chapter 2. They were all in one place, in one mind, in one accord. That's unity and harmony. Mm -hmm. And what happened? The Spirit of God fell, and nothing was impossible after that. 
And amazingly, that mirrors Genesis 11 when all of the nations came yeah. together to build the Tower of Babel. They were all in one mind, one accord, spoke one language. And God said, this is trouble because nothing they imagined, nothing they put their hand to will be impossible for them. So how did, how? now listen to this. Let's use a little reverse psychology for a second. How did God handle that situation? Which one, the Babel? The Babel. The Tower of Babel. How did God handle that? He gave them all the different languages. He changed the language so they all could be confused. Which caused chaos and confusion yeah. because everybody was speaking differently. Different tongues. <laughs> yeah, he gave them tongues for a wrong, for a bad reason. Tongues in Acts chapter 2 for a good reason. But think about it. That's interesting, yeah. The tongues brought chaos and confusion because they all spoke different languages. languages and different things. And in Acts chapter 2, God gave tongues so that they could all speak the same thing. Oh, if we could just tame our tongue and let the Holy Spirit have our tongue and say the same thing. Sister Christy. No, it just. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Let's let's do this. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's do this. Let's build. Let's go. Let's get in this program. Let's get in this situation. Let's do this. Let's let's join together. Because this isn't. church that I go to this is my home and those aren't my church peoples that's my family and I want to live to have their lives improved and I want the church to be united and if we do that guess what We can see the enemy defeated. We can see the walls fall right before our eyes. Okay? Philippians 128. Don't be intimidated by your enemies. This will be a sign to them that they are going to be destroyed. But that, but that you are going to be saved even by God himself. And Romans 16, 20. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. We're going to end early tonight. I'm going to get to go home early tonight. Okay? But think about that. Okay, so World War II, it's D-Day. And the orders were to all of the commanders, you just do whatever you want, feel like you need to do and do whatever and we'll hope for the best. Or did they have orders? That's what it instructions, mm -hmm. directions, and they said, okay, so this is our, hello, somebody. This is our objective. This is how we need to get to our objective. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have struggles and, and situations and circumstances getting to our objective. But we are a united force, and I know that I'm going to land here and they're going to land here, and they're going to land there, and we are a coordinated force together. They know he worked, but they tried. 
And one of the biggest things that caused us victory in at Normandy on D-Day is the ability for our commanders to make those decisions. To say, one of them said, we're in the wrong spot. We landed in the wrong spot. Well, let's start all over. I give up. I quit. No, they said, well, I guess we start right here. We have the same objective. I guess we just start from here. Instead of, you know, it didn't go the way I wanted it to. It didn't go the way I thought it should. Well, yeah. So what are you going to do about it? We're just going to start from here. I know, I'm, I'm not where I should be with God. Well, start from start there. From there. Start, from there. start from there. Don't look for another place to start. Just start, start. Just start from there. I don't know if I can do it. Well, just start. What am I supposed to Just start. Just start. <laughs> just start. Where? Somewhere. <laughs> just start somewhere. Okay? Last point. Like I said, we're going home early tonight. Which is okay by me. We see victory in the struggle. We see victory in the struggle. Now I'm gonna let that resonate for a second. That's interesting. I'm, I'm gonna say something that's shocking to you, but there is no victory without fight. That's, no, it's true. That's true. Well, they, uh, well, it'd be better if they would just quit. Yeah, but that's not victory. Mm -mm. A victory is going through the struggle and say I made it because of God yes. yeah. I made it because of God, because of God. you know I'm, I'm going to hit this again okay we had that cliche well God never gave you anything more than you can handle it's not what the Bible says no. No. that is not what the Bible says the Bible says he will never give you he will never allow you to have more temptation of a sin than you can bear. That's what the context is. Read it. The God does, it's true, God does not give us more than we can handle, but God does allow us more than we can handle. Well, why would he do that? Because if we never had more than we can handle, why do we need God? That's true. It is in that, I can't handle this, God says, Call on me. And, and, as a church united, we stand together. In the fight, with the fight, through the fight. Can I get an amen? amen. Philippians 1, verse 29, 30. Y'all need to go home and read Philippians chapter 1 tonight. Yeah. For you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ. You have not only, you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering for him. No, that's a mistranslation. No, no, no. No, no. That does not drive up with my theology. We are in this fight together. You have seen me suffer for him in the past, and you know that I'm still in the midst of this great struggle. Oh my God, yes. And I will fight until the fight's over, however that ends. Mm -hmm. And when I'm tired, when I'm exhausted, I want and need and expect my brothers and sisters of Christ to form around me, form ranks around me and pick me up. That's what living in expectation is. Living in expectation is, look, hey, 
hey, listen, I'm going into the fight. I expect you to be there. Yeah. And you, we may not be there, be there, but we'll be there. Uh -huh. That's awesome. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, you're in the fight? All right. Guess what? I just got done with mine. So I'm going to help you fight yours because I know. Listen to me. I'm either heading for trouble, in the middle of trouble, or coming out of trouble. One of those three. I'm either in trouble. I'm, I'm either heading for trouble, in the middle of trouble, or coming out of trouble. All of us are living in one of those three. I don't think I like that. I know. And guess what it ends? It ends when Christ receives us to our eternal glory. But until then, we're in it to win it. So we live with expectation that God is 2023 and almost to the end of August and you brought me thus far, and I'm convinced you're going to take me on the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. Amen. And for those young pups, those little lammies that go through the struggles that I'm going through, or the struggles that I've went through, or the struggles that I've been through, I could say, hey, little lammy, come and talk. Let me tell you how I did everything wrong so you don't have to. Yes. Yeah. I just, I just, I just failed. I just failed. No, you didn't. You just learned how not to do it so you can pass that information on. Yes. That's all that was. Yeah. And we give comfort because we have received comfort. Yes. Amen. And it helps to see someone who's been through it because you know that if they can do it, then you can do it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I don't mean to be dredge up bad memories here, okay? But I had, I had been asked to perform a lot of funerals some for people that I'd never heard of in my life. But after dad had passed, I had a different new sense that I could tell people, I lost my dad. Yeah. I don't know how you feel. I've been there. And I can tell you what's about to happen. Yeah. You're not going to like it, but... Here's going to be some of the stages that you're going to go through. Yeah. And if you need help, call me. Yeah. If you need help, come see me. Because I have a brand new understanding of what it means to lose, to have a loved one die. Mm -hmm. I'm not just speaking from theological ramblings. I know. I've been there. And that's why we go through what we go through a lot of times. So that we learn how to be victorious to pass on the good news that you can be victorious too. You need to be willing to share that too. Absolutely. Because a lot of times well they don't know what you're going through. I mean, if, if I saw somebody, um, to say I saw somebody from the church really having a hard time at a loss, I feel like I can go up and talk to them because I've experienced it. Yes. And I can tell them not 
Yes. And I could do that because I have been there. Yes. Absolutely. And and <laughs> look listen. So you didn't do it perfectly. Welcome to the club. There's only one person that I know of that handled every situation perfectly. His name was Jesus Christ. Yeah. Other than that, guys and gals were making mistakes in the Old Testament, and guys and gals were making mistakes in the New Testament. And learning from their mistakes, and getting better, and going on. So tomorrow, when you wake up, live with expectations. And don't come home tomorrow night, well, I didn't expect that. <laughs> And the church said, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. So we're going to have a, a, a special service on Sunday morning. Uh, there, I know we're going to have a lot of people gone because of Labor Day weekend. And if you're gone, I hope that you have a blessed, relaxing time wherever you wind up. But we're going to have a good good Sunday morning yeah. service. And I invite you to be there at 10 o'clock. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for this day. And this is the day you have made. We rejoice, we're glad in it. Father God, for those who are not living in expectation, help us to start living in expectations. And those of us that are living in expectations, help us to raise those expectations. Father God, help us to start tomorrow, but help us to really put this into focus and into action. Sunday morning, when we arrive with high raised expectations of God doing something great in our midst. We give you the praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Have a great night.